Hi everybody, this is uh, Lawrence with Dayusha's Deals Academy. Uh, with me is uh, my friend Zach from The Goat Guys. What's going on everybody? How are you doing today? So what we have today is a series I want to do. Is I look at a bunch of old goat, goat boss monsters, like Jinzo over here. See what type of deck they had back in GOAT format and make a modern version of it. So this one is a, a deck list I found uh, by Django, uh, who who premiered it on Jinzo and Tonic's channel. Uh, links Yo, to... Be sure to check both of them out because both of them make fantastic content. Yeah, I will link the video that I got this from in the description as well as uh, links to everybody's everybody who I will reference his channel. So I'll reference in all three of them, Zach being one of them. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is basically their version of what a Jinzo deck would look like in GOAT format. Mostly its its goal was bringing out uh, serv Servant of, of Catabolism and Jinzo number 7 under the effects of gravity by and level of it, level level limit area B to basically just keep poking the opponent while buffing them up with a bunch of equip spells, as well as have, as well as having have, sorry <laughs> as well as having Jinzo over here equipped with amplifier is the optimal board because then you have access to all of your traps, which means gravity bind is still in effect. And Zach can give more information because he is the GOAT expert between the two of us. Alright, so here's the thing. This deck is very interesting. So obviously, as Lawrence said, the goal is to just beat the crap out of your opponent with small monsters. Uh, so we'll just do a quick card by card and I'll explain. So Sonic Duck's just a level... It's the biggest level 3, so it gets under gravity bind and level limit. Um, BLS is the arguable best card in the format. It is a boss monster on its own. You can banish a light and a dark as you play many to summon him. Uh, he either can attack twice or he banishes anything on the field. Next, you play Jinzo. This is what the deck's based off. Everyone knows what Jinzo does. Trap cards can't be activated. But if you have Amplifier, it doesn't matter. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have my one of the most underrated cards in GOAT format. Mataza the Zapper is incredible. One, if you don't know anything about goat format warriors are extremely strong rota is it too uh chaos monsters are popular so bls and chaos orc mm -hmm. mataz is a dark and you can search it off the saying gan correct or you can float it off tomatoes which we're not playing but um, that's neither here nor there this card can also attack twice and a very important thing is control of it cannot change which means Cards like Thousand Eyes Restrict, which is a staple, Snatch Steel, Brain Control, and Mind Control don't work. Uh, enemy Controller, is that that too? Yeah, Enemy Controller is in the format. It just doesn't see a ton of play. Yeah, I just need to remember, like, at least get all of our options. And then uh, Sandman, this is pre errata, so can search any 1500. Uh, Servant of uh, Catabolism is just a light that can attack directly. Yep. Like, you could play other ones that attack directly, but Servant and Catabolism, as well as Jinzo number 7, I think, uh, Jinzo number 7 because it's a, it's Jinzo. And this one because I think it's the highest one that can do it. Yeah. And it's also and light and dark. And it's light and dark, so there's nothing in here except for the, these two are the only non-light and dark monsters on the in here. Which, uh... So Mask of Darkness is a flip that lets you add a trap card back. Uh, Iron Blacksmith Kotetsu adds your equip spells. So it, this this makes it so you can get your amplifiers or beef up your attack directly mo uh, uh, cards. Yep. And we it, have Jinzo number 7. This is another attack directly card. Magician of Faith lets you add a spell from your graveyard to your hand. This recycles your equips or your power spells. And then Sinister Serpent is pre errata again, so it's a, immediately a card in your hand every turn. So yep. spells you have, Pot of Greed, I don't know what it does, but it's good. Swords to stall, Graceful Charity to dig deeper. You have Level Limit Area B for stalling. You have the Amplifier for Jinzo. You have uh, Axe of Despair, uh, United We Stand, and Mage Power for power boosts. And then you have Premature Burial to Reborn Jinzo or any of your other powerful monsters. Yep. 
For traps, you have uh, Mirror Force, Double Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, Ring of Destruction, Double Compulse, the Double Gravity Bind to uh, push for that strategy, and the Three Solemn Judgment to negate all of your opponent's shit. And before you ask, uh, Gravity Bind and Level Lua Amia B are, are semi limited, so that's why we only play two of them. If we, Correct. Uh, if we had the option to play more, we would. <laughs> Most likely, yeah. So this is what it was in GOAT. Here's what I have done to make this modernized. Now, you, you probably see a, you know, my first <laughs> response, that's a lot of spells. Yes, that is. They do be a lot of spells. But, in retrospect, I made it this way because this is as pure Jinzo as you can bloody get. Plus, on paper, I find this deck extremely fun and trolly, and it sh would work. <laughs> so, we have uh, Jinzo Lord, which basically, you can, only, you can only special summon this by sending a Jinzo you control to the graveyard. And, uh, trap it basically is, it's Jinzo, but it, after that, and then also you can destroy as many face-up traps as possible. And it's like 300 for each one to your opponent for each. And it's a once per turn. Not a hard once per turn, but a, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I play uh, two of the... Uh, then you play uh, three of the uh, Jinzo, the Machine Menace. As long as there's a face-up... Uh, as long as there's a card in on the field, face-up on the field or in either graveyard... You special summon this to your hand and it becomes level 6. Making it easier to get to your extra deck, which it this deck doesn't really use a lot. Uh, and then what you do is uh, you tribute this special summon to Jinzo from your hand or graveyard and destroy all traps, opponent controls. Pretty good. Then you have Jinzo. What it does, what it do. Then you have arguably my favorite card that makes this deck a lot more fun and trolly is Psychic Mega Cyber. If your opponent controls more spells and traps than you do, special summon this from your hand. You only do it once per turn. And when this declares an attack uh, on your opponent's effect monster while you control Jinzo, you can <coughs> tribute this card and then place that opponent's monster face up in this spell and trap card zone as a continuous trap. This is non-targeting removal for problematic effect monsters that are killing your deck. It is fun. <laughs> and it's an easy special summon. Because a lot of the there's a lot of these are like regular spells and uh quick plays or a uh, continuous card that's just there for fun knowledge and the field spell. But so next for the monster we have a psychic uh bounder. Uh it's basically the searcher for the deck. Yes. When it's normal or special summon, you grab a Jinzo or a spell and trap card that specifically says Jinzo when it's card text. You add it to your deck. And then when a, uh, another monster you control is attacked by your opponent's monster for damage calc, destroy both that monster and this card. You can only use each effect, every effect uh, hard once per turn. Not bad. Then you get the second, one of the, the next best card in the deck is Jinzo Jector. He becomes Jinzo while on the field or in the graveyard. Hey, look. If you have this in Jinzo Lord, normal summon this. Get, use its effect. Get rid of it. And guess what? You have Jinzo Lord now. Anyways, uh, you can tribute this card to add one Jinzo monster from the deck. To the deck. Uh, except for this. And then reveal all set cards your opponent's spell and trap card zone. This is basically knowledge. Hey, what did my opponent set? What do I have to worry about a play around? Okay, good to know. And if there's any traps, you special summon a Jinzo from your hand. And you summon as many Jinzos uh, equal to the number of revealed traps. It's basically knowledge. And then Jinzo Returner. It's, uh... It attacks. It can attack directly when it's sent to the graveyard. You target a Jinzo monster in the graveyard. Special summon it, but it's destroyed during the end phase. 
That's it for the monsters. Next for the spells, we got Love the Cosmos, which uh, your opponent your opponent could set a uh, trap card directly from their hand or deck to deck. And if they do, you press someone to do it from your deck. And if they don't, you just add a Jinzo or a monster that specifically lists Jinzo in its card text from your deck to your hand. It's either you special summon something or you get in your hand. Either way, you still get a monster. Next, you play a special, uh, uh, not, not just a special titanium alloy or everlasting alloy. Uh, if you control Jinzo, you activate one of the effects. All machines you currently control cannot be controlled by your opponent's card effects on end of turn. And if a card effect, uh, card effect is actually that targets a machine monster, negate it. Not once per turn. Very fun. Next, you have a uh, Cyber Energy Shock. If you control a Jinzo, a target card on the field, destroy it. And if it was a trap card, apply the following one of the following effects. You negate one face-up card in the field, uh, or all Jinzo you control gain 800. This is a hard once per turn. Next, uh, Psychic Wave. If you control a machine monsters, you send a Jinzo card from your hand, uh, a Jinzo from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Uh, two to graveyard. Ugh, I can't read today. And you just uh, inflict 600. But during the main phase, except the turn this was sent to the graveyard, you banish this card from your graveyard. You target a machine monster in your graveyard. You send a ginger monster from your deck to the graveyard. And if you do, you add the target to your hand. Hard once per turn. <coughs> then we get the uh, the fun card that I, that I absolutely enjoy because this is fun. You send a monster you control that is owned by your opponent. Uh, to the graveyard and special summon a sea monster from your hand or graveyard. This, that's not what we usually use this for. We use this for its second ef for the second effect. Uh, when your opponent draws for their normal draw in their draw phase, while you control a Jinzo, you declare one type monster spell or trap. Your opponent reveals the card they drew. And if this is the declared type, you send this card to the graveyard, and you draw a card. Potentially, you can draw during your opponent's turn. And, you get knowledge of what the deck is playing. If you play this turn one, you just bring this on the field. It's like, okay, uh, monster. And if you called it right when they draw it, you get to see what the card is and potentially have knowledge of what the deck is. Pretty good, in my opinion. Next, for the non Jinzo cards, we play two limited removal. We play limited removal, which is just double the attack of all machines, and then they're all destroyed during end phase. Called because hand traps suck a big load of monkey dung, because they they stop what we do. Allure because every card except for Psychic Bounder is a dark, so you will always have at least the draw two. Uh. Heavy Metal Raiders, because like every card is dark except for Psychic Bounder. So this makes it so. Oh hey, they destroy battle. No, and guess what? They gain attack if, if you attack them. And if you destroy a and if you destroy a card, uh, you just special summon a dark machine. So uh, you just. Summon. Guess what? I killed. I killed a monster using a psychic bounder. Hey, look! I summoned. Well, what? Well, you would do mecha cyber. That's the one disadvantage of bounder. And then you play the terraforming. Then for the extra deck, this one doesn't. Re from what I've tested with, you don't really summon a lot from the extra deck. So, y you don't really need a big extra deck. So, I just run three of the Jinzos, which is just two level six monsters, and you detach one material from this card, target a face up monster your opponent controls to take control of it to the end phase, and you cannot activate effects or declare an attack. And if a trap card is on the field, you contribute one monster. If you do, destroy the face that one face up card on the field. Each effects once per turn. So Zach, what are your thoughts of uh, me bringing Jinzo into the the current meta game? Um, based on what I know about the meta game, good luck. Yeah, 
But on paper, uh, this looks to me. This is extremely. This has the potential to be a pretty trolley deck. Oh, trolley, sure, but you can't be Dragon Link. Yeah. Fair <laughs> but hey, my goal is not to make them competitive. My goal is to make them work. And on Being paper, on paper, this looks like it will work. Agreed. And I I will be working on this deck a lot more because I might build this IRL because this looks like it's fun and cheap. Benny who's uh that's it for this episode. Uh if you like what you see, let me know. Uh I do want to do more of these in the future. I already have the next one planned out too. And for people who play GOAT, give me boss monsters and I'll see what I can do. And uh uh, I'd like to thank Zach for joining me to help me out with uh, the goat side of things. Uh, thanks for having me. Yep, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.